Hi, my name is Felix Matos Rodriguez and I am the Chancellor of the City University of New York. People who know me call me Fellow and this is my new conversation space on CUNY TV, Café con Fellow. Bienvenidos a Café con Fellow. Today we bring you a conversation with someone who's earned recognition as a strong advocate for New Yorkers and is now a strong and dedicated advocate for our own City University of New York as chairperson for our Board of Trustees, Bill Thompson. Born and raised in Brooklyn, he is the son of a teacher and a judge, a product of our New York City public school system, and he has a long history of championing innovation, diversity, and progress in both public and private spheres. Mr. Thompson served five terms as president of the New York City Board of Education and was twice elected a New York City's controller, managing a hundred million operating and capital budget and one of the largest pension funds in the U.S. Chairperson Thompson, Chancellor. I am honored to welcome you to Café Con Fellow. I look forward to talking about CUNY's current and future role in lifting New York. But first, the first critical question in Café Con Fellow is, <laughs> How do you take your coffee and how many cups a day? Uh, probably too many cups a day. I drink my coffee black. Okay. Uh, I usually try... A, no sugar, no... No, no cream. sugar, no cream. And if I'm in a Starbucks, I try and get the darker blend or wherever I'm going, kind of the darker, stronger blend. And unfortunately, I probably drink eh, two to three cups a day. Oof. Um, it's, it's a, the wake up. It's, it's a good habit that we share. I mean, I have my with, 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 with some milk, but it's great to have you here in the show. And uh, I mean, I wanted to begin uh, with a little bit of, of your connection to the City University of New York. I mean, sure. people know your resume from your great career in public service. I don't think that folks know what are some of your sort of family connections to the City University of New York. So I'd like to begin with, with that. Okay. Well, as I'd like to point out to people, I did not go to CUNY. Uh, to any of our schools. But the opportunity that were afforded me in life were well, because of my parents. Uh, my father was a World War II veteran. As a matter of fact, if you go back, the Army then, he was an Army vet um, in a segregated Army. Oh. The opportunity is when you look at the late 40s or the mid-1940s right after the war, opportunity for African Americans were difficult. So my father was a graduate of Brooklyn College, 1948, and he went with the GI Bill. Yeah. Uh, my mother graduated in 1949, as I point out to everybody, they both went to Brooklyn College. They met at Brooklyn College, right. so if it wasn't for Brooklyn College, a CUNY institution, I wouldn't be here. But what it did was afford them opportunity. It gave them the chance to get the solid education, to get a strong foundation, my father went to work for the city of New York and went to law school at night while he had a family. I was born then while he was going to law school. Uh, my mother inevitably became a teacher and taught in the neighborhood in Bedford-Stuyvesant. My father became a lawyer, uh, an elected official. He was Brooklyn's first African-American state senator. And it led to him inevitably being a judge. But CUNY and Brooklyn College specifically, that was the foundation for a great middle class life and for the opportunity that afforded them and afforded me. So I'm a product of New York City's public schools. I had the opportunity to go to a, a private college because of the opportunity that CUNY afforded them. And I like to point out to people right now, it, it's not just my parents. My daughter went to private college, but she got her master's at Brooklyn College, you know, in, 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 in special ed. Uh, my son, who was not doing well in school and inevitably came home, he went to Lehman and did well and focused. And during the pandemic, graduated. My daughter, his twin right now, she's in Brooklyn College. She's had her ups and downs at times. She's focused. She's in, in Hunter. So all of them, what it has done for my family, what CUNY has done for my family, whether it's my parents or my children, it has created opportunity for them. So it, when you talk about mobility, opportunity, my family is a great example of what CUNY can be. That's a great, great answer, and I wanted people to know that all those connections you had to, uh, to CUNY. And, and obviously for you, 
I think you've been in a very privileged and probably unique position in the U.S. of having been the chair of the board of the New York City Public Schools for a long while, right? right? And also serving in, in the CUNY board. So you have this sort of this K-20 continuum. I actually think that there might not be anyone in the country that has served, I think, in those two capacities in any state. I would love you to reflect on that. It's, I'd like to, to say it was kind of I graduated. I finished, you know, I, I, I finished high school and I went on to higher ed. But the, the one thing, and, 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 and inevitably, um, you know, when you start to look at a pre-K through 16 system or uh -huh. continuum, I'm a believer in that. Uh, now that and, and, and I love the closer relationships, the closer linkages that you've created as chancellor with the pre-K through 12 public school system in New York. And that's, it makes so much sense. And, and, and I think, you know, over time at CUNY, given your focus, given my belief in, and, and where we're going as a system, you're gonna to continue to see those linkages grow. But I think that it is what other parts of the country should look at to try and create those, create those closer linkages. It makes a lot of sense to know. And looking at K through 12, and I know you're gonna probably talk about it a little later, but then again, when you look at things like College Now, I was able to increase and increase a focus. One of the things I did at that point with the chairperson and chancellor of City University System, back then it was Matt Goldstein, but it was also Herman Badillo. Yeah. One of the early things that we were able to do in the, um, that, at that point, I'm not sure if, I think it was Harold Levy, uh, then who was the chancellor of the New York City public school system, was to increase a college now, was to understand, wait a minute, this is great for New York City public school students, and it was good for CUNY, and to create and expand it and very proud of that, but I think that more and more people should look at what we're doing in New York City and understand a pre-K through 16 system makes a lot of sense. And, and I mean, it's good for the students, it's good for the yes. city and the state in terms of uh, savings and, and uh, no, and, and uh, but thank you for planting those seeds in college now, and now we have thousands all yes. students will benefit from that. And we have great data about the outcomes in terms of many of those students then wanting yes. to come to CUNY or to college. And when they do come, they graduate faster, they graduate on time, and they go and they contribute to the economy in, 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 in New York. So uh, thank you for that, and we're lucky to, to have you in this role. You've mentioned uh, the partnership that we are developing with the New York City Public Schools. A number of those things are part of our new strategic roadmap. Uh, as the chair of the board, the board was right. uh, very, very uh, instrumental in helping us determine what were some of the priorities. What are some of the things from that strategic roadmap that excite you the most, that give you the biggest source of pride as, as chair? I think that a combination of things. I think the linkages with the business community, mm -hmm. reaching out to the business community, creating opportunities for our students, being able to say to them, you go to CUNY, any one of our schools, it will lead to a better life and a better job. And I think that's one of the things, I love the focus that we've done and taken the initiative to look at making sure that our credits for our students in our community colleges count Yep. To it's because that will lead to more students going for their four year degrees or taking a pause right then, always having the opportunity to come, to come back. back. Yep. But realizing getting your AA degree perhaps a little sooner, being able to, if you want to pursue a four year and a four year degree, being able to do that. But there are a lot of things, jobs, some of the things that you've talked about and, and created focus on as far as getting, as far as our students getting paid internships. All of those things, I think creating greater opportunities for our students, better preparing our students, understanding at a certain point, you may not have to go and get your two year or four year degree but you can improve your skills, you can improve your employability. All of those things as you look at the roadmap, as you look at what we're doing between now and 2030, all of that's good for this, for New York City, for New York State, for our region, but for our students more than anything. It will better prepare them, give them greater opportunities, and all in all, I think that, you know, as I said, it is, it's great to see, and, and you know, we've had the discussions back and forth 
I'm a believer in here are the targets, where are we going? And I think that I'm enthused, I'm excited. I know my colleagues on the board are excited also. We're moving in a direction and we're moving there. The chancellor, the board, all of us moving together, which is a great feeling. Well, thank you, and this is a, a great segue. I think that sometimes many of our viewers don't always understand what the role of the, of the board is. And, and I wanna share an anecdote as I come back and ask you about uh, maybe sharing a thing or two with our viewers about what the board does that you, that you think they might not be aware of, which you think is important that they do. Uh, but I also wanna talk about the board as great champions for some of the projects that we have. And I wanna give one example. You talked about mm -hmm. uh, paid internships, which you know is, is one of my, my, my biggest yes. focus because it puts money in our students' pockets and it allows them to have the work experience and build the networks, yes. all the things that we know are phenomenal for our students. I want to give you credit because one of our most uh, proud internships, which is the one with the MTA, mm -hmm. uh, was something that you sort of brought the MTA and us together based on your networks. And I want people at times don't understand they're part of the role of the board. They see all you guys in meetings and policy, mm -hmm. but you're champions for the university and you're opening doors for us. And in that particular internship, you know that we had 1,600 applicants for 150 slots. Yes. So I wanna thank you for that, but I wanna use that as a pivot to maybe share with our audience things about what the board does that you think people might not be aware of. I think there's a number of different things that the board does. The, the first thing, and, and what the public gets to see is almost the finished product. Yep. So they see us voting in a meeting, not a lot of dialogue in those meetings, and they're kind of like, eh, what are they doing? The work that leads up to that, the committee meetings, the subcommittee meetings, the discussions back and forth, working on issues of policy, looking at outcomes, trying to focus on what's best for students, working with the chancellor and the chancellery and the people who work there. All of that, people don't see. But we're also advocates for CUNY, advocates for our students. So opportunities at whether it is, as you pointed out, the MTA or at other places. I had a conversation with somebody earlier today who I've known for years and was like, you know, Ooh, we need to follow up and have a conversation about creating internships. That's what my colleagues and I on the board do, not just policy issues, not just advocacy for students. Also, as you see a problem, we bring it to you. You've heard enough of those and, and situations that need to be remedied and worked on. So it's a number of different things, but and in the end also, it is hearing from our students. What is working and, and not working for them? And I remember you know, talking to a student, and I wasn't quite at CUNY then, but I'll, I won't forget, the student talked about, at that point, he had used up most of his financial aid, his financial aid on remedial classes. Now, this is before you got it, but on remedial classes. And his question was, what do I do now? That conversation is at least 10 years old, but it has still sat with me. So as, as we've done things differently with regard to remediation, as we've done things to try and help accelerate, all of those things come into play. We're trying to be there as advocates for both our students and our system. And, 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 and at times, yeah, we can be a little over the top and a little overbearing, but you've dealt well with that and, we've, and worked in partnership with the board and it is exhilarating being able to work together to get things done. So we do a lot, um, and, and that's not even looking at the participation in searches for college presidents and deans. It, is, it takes a lot of time, and as I like to point out to people, we may be underpaid, <laughs> Uh, for all the time we put in, and by the way, board members are not paid. Okay, that, that it was, is free. I, I, Let's I, I make that clear. Yes. Yes. <laughs> then we said, you know, we should double. They should double our salaries from zero to double zero. Uh, but it's the satisfaction in doing things for our students, for CUNY, and for the city that really keeps my colleagues going. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, and I appreciate that that service and the rest of the board members. And I mean, like you said, the the, the board interest in the in the subject of transfers is one of the things that yes. we made a priority. In the, in the roadmap, 
an earlier decision on uh, ending remediation as we know it yes. and moving to co-curricular courses, making sure that the students in that way were earning college credit since the beginning and hopefully saving money for them and mm -hmm. for the state and the city on financial aid. So uh, thank you for, uh, for that. I wanted to ask you one, one other, and again, it goes back to some of the other roles of the board, right? Mm -hmm. And this one, we're talking about things that are clearly academic, right? CUNY is also a big landlord in, in, in New York State, uh, a big source of economic development uh, with our purchasing power and all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, you have been a pioneer in the city and the state about women and minority owned businesses, making sure that there's opportunity for them. Uh, and you have, uh, there's been state and city targets for all the state agencies to meet, but you've always said CUNY has to do better. Can you talk a little bit about why, A, why you've been committed to that space in general? Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, how do you see it linked to your role as the board chair at CUNY? I have been a strong believer in creating opportunity. I always like to talk about, even when I was controller, it's about access and opportunity, trying to create and give the access to people who have been denied it in the past and trying to create the opportunity for them to do things. Trying to create opportunity for people to do business with CUNY, for us, we're going to spend the same amount of money, but where does it get spent? Yeah. Who is it spent with? And if you spend it with minority and women-owned businesses, it is going to come back to benefit us. It's going to help to grow those bases within communities across this city. And in the end, who are people going to hire? They're going to hire people from those communities. Yep. So it's an economic generator trying to tr create and trying to realize that CUNY, just like so many others, can be that economic engine, not just in what we're teaching, but in the, in the dollars that we spend and trying to create that opportunity. The vice chair of the board is a strong, Sandra, is a strong believer yes, absolutely. in trying to create opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses. So that is something that I've helped to champion for a number of years, for well over 20 years right now. Being able to do that at CUNY is a great thing. And, and, and at the same point, it realizes and you look at the long-term benefit. No, we also have, when we're looking and working with your team, we've got lots of real estate. Yep. And some of it that's used, we've got things, not just the buildings themselves or some buildings that are older, we also have air rights and a number of different things. How can we maximize the usage of those air rights, the usage of those buildings to create either newer buildings for our students, you know, whether it is part of a larger building or a building itself, but also, how can we generate revenue in tough financial times, and we are in tough financial times, how do we generate additional dollars to be able to go in the system, to be able to not, when city and state dollars, and at times federal dollars, are, are, are short, how can we try and not have to make cuts or make as many cuts as, as we'd have to? How can we create additional benefit for our students and for faculty and that's what the focus has been and we've worked along with your team to identify spaces moving along through a request for interest a request for proposals and we're about to embark on let's look at how we can generate additional revenue and talking about not a few million tens or hundreds of millions for CUNY system. No, and one of the things also that I love is that the board is also, while doing that, right, which is the fiscally responsible thing to do, mm -hmm. making sure that we always remain mission focused, that we yes. do it in a way that is consistent with who we are as an institution, that we're also part, in, and it's been part of the conversation, I mean, you've been talking about real estate also, about how do we do that also in a way that assists the city and the state navigate yes. some of the housing issues Absolutely. which we face, which our students and our faculty and staff face, right? So the exactly. way for us to be able to do better on that is financially correct in the right yes. direction, policy correct in terms of what everybody in the mm -hmm. state is trying to figure out. And, um, and I think also uh, to your point on the minority and women-owned businesses, two other thoughts is the more those businesses connect with CUNY, the more they get to know also our students, and that can open up Correct. to your previous point, yes. opportunities for internships, mentorship, uh, put an entrepreneurial spirit in your students mm -hmm. too, so they can see themselves as somebody Absolutely. who can be owning uh, some of those businesses, so a lot, a lot of opportunities. I would agree with you 100%. This is, I, I've always talked about whether it's in the public school system or in CUNY. Our students, the dreams that they dream, 
They have to be able to visualize it. They have to see it. So being able to see entrepreneurs who look like them, yep. who are doing business with CUNY, inspires them because then they realize, I can do this too. Yep. I can have my own business. I can generate revenue. I can hire people from my community. All of that are things that benefit our students again and benefit CUNY. And so that's a perfect segue to our next segment where we're going to be featuring some of our students. So, Chairman Thompson, we're going to take a very quick break. But when we come back, we'll continue our conversation uh, prompted by questions from our students at your college and the CUNY School of Law. So stay tuned. Welcome back. You are watching Café Con Fellow. My guest today is CUNY Board of Trustees Chairperson, former New York City Controller, and former President of the Board of Education, Mr. Bill Thompson. Let's see what questions we have from our students. The first question is from Ryan. What advice would you give to students just like myself who want to be in leadership positions in the future just like you? Hmm. Well, Ryan, I, I think there are a couple of things. Number one, do as, as far as being prepared, as far as knowing what you're talking about, you want to make sure that you do that. So it is constant. We're all lifelong learners. This is continuing to what's going on around you, reading about that, understanding it, staying focused on that. But secondly, it's in positions of leadership, what do you believe in? Ryan, what do you believe in exactly? And stay true to your beliefs. I may not always follow what is what everybody else wants to do, but as long as I can follow what I believe in, I'll be comfortable. And you have to be able to look in the mirror and realize that you did what you believe in as opposed to what's politically expedient or what everybody else wants to do. That's what leadership is about. It is about leading from a position of knowledge, but leading others, a position of, of principle and knowledge, and then leading. If you're right, people will follow. Thank you. I think we have another question from uh, Joshua. Hi, Mr. Thompson. I'm a student with CUNY School of Law, and um, although I'm getting my bang for my buck at the school, the cost of living in New York is constantly rising. So is CUNY considering any measures to alleviate um, the burdens of educational costs as relates to uh, the rising cost of living in New York City? Also, I read in your bio that your father encouraged you to run for mayor, um, and you did it. Are you considering perhaps running again? <laughs> I'm not sure I want to answer that, Joshua. <laughs> Um, a couple of things. Number one, I think that if you look at our tuition in CUNY, it has been amazingly flat for years or minor, minor yep. increase. So I think that in trying to make sure that we stay affordable, uh, that's one thing. I think that the paid internships that you've created focus on helps to put money in students' pockets, helps expand their horizons, helps expose them to the world of work and create the networks that so many of our students don't have that other students who are perhaps better financially off have. It creates that for them also. And then in, as we talked about earlier, trying to look at, um, you know, as we look at our real estate and trying to create opportunities there, a lot of that is if, if, it's, if we're talking about housing, affordable housing, housing. Yep. workforce yep. housing, housing that creates opportunity for our students for others to be able to live and work in the city of New York. And when it comes to mayor, and, and, and it was, did my father encourage me? He was always supportive. If I was running for office, he was, you know, my father was always there. Uh, I mean, before I ran for mayor, I was controller of the city of New York, yeah. so I was a citywide elected official. Uh, but run for mayor again? Absolutely not. I mean, we have a mayor right now, Mayor Adams. Eric is doing a good job. And it is a difficult, difficult job. He is handling it well. A he great is, challenging time Yes, also. he is fighting for New Yorkers. Uh, no, I'm not thinking of running for mayor. As a matter of I'm just thinking of supporting our mayor uh, and the job that he's doing these days. Another CUNY graduate, too. A, a double CUNY a, graduate. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So I think our last question comes from Ashley. What is your most favorite memory of being in college? that you can share on TV. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, that is a great question. And, and, and the one thing, while I was controller, I was at a forum, 
and I went to Tufts University. I was at a forum at Tufts, and the president of the college was there and a number of faculty and others, and I was asked, and I said something about my college career. And I think what I said was, I, I really didn't learn a lot. And I looked at the president, and he was having a heart attack, and it was, it was just like, oh my goodness. I said that, not that I didn't learn a lot of things, but I said it to, to make a point. So, but the one thing that I did learn, and that, that is probably the thing that I learned the most from college, there were people from all over the world, mm -hmm. people from different backgrounds, people from, you know, from all over the country. It was learning how to interact, interact with different people in New York, but these were people from all over the world. And interacting with people from all over the world, all over the country, every economic strata, that was what I learned. That was my best memory of college. And I told that story, as I tell you, and the president had all of a sudden had a huge smile on his face. But that was the truth. I learned about people and how to interact with people. And also, it was my first time away, because I was a public school student. It's my first time away from home. I had to take care of myself. I had to make my decisions. And you had to learn to live with the decisions that you made and the consequences and outcomes of those decisions. Those are the things that I learned the most in college. Those were the things that I took away from college. Um, and it helped to make me who I am today and who I was in my adult life. So I learned self-reliance, but also interacting with lots of different people in college. Great message and a great way to, to end. So our time is limited. Thank you so much, Chairman Thompson, for uh, being here and, and for coming to Cafe with Fellow and sharing your expertise on education, your vision of the future of CUNY, uh, your confidence in the city of New York, and other things that uh, also inspire all of us to continue working uh, on behalf of the City University of New York. That's our show. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please tune in for Cafe con Fellow on weekends. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8 p.m on CUNY TV. Saludos and thank you.